If you are looking for an opportunity to work on a real life data science project or almost like a remote internship, then today's video is going to be super useful to you. We are going to interview a person who was a software engineer before and Omdena helped her make a transition from software engineer to a data scientist by giving her an opportunity to work on real life projects. So Omdena is a social enterprise and the way they work is they collaborate with NGOs. So let's say there is some NGO non-profit entity, they want to build an AI project. Now they don't have a budget. So what Omdena will do is they will collaborate with them and on the other side they will collaborate with volunteers like you who can work without pay but in return you are getting a real life project experience and Omdena kind of stays in the middle. In the group of volunteers there will be experienced data scientists as well. So when you're working with them you get mentorship, you get all the tips uh, for your project. Likita will talk about her experience with Omdena, what was the application process, uh, what kind of project she worked on and how exactly this helped her get a job. So we'll cover that part towards the end so make sure you watch the entire video. Likita, thanks for coming to the show. Uh, we'll straight away start with your current profile. So uh, please tell us what do you do right now and in your current profile, what are the tools and technologies that you use? Yeah, first of all, like, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. And uh, currently I'm working in data science domain and it's been like around 2.5 years in this industry. And uh, I work in uh, various domains like, you know, like ranging from e-commerce, finance industries, and then doing marketing analytics using wide range of technologies like NLP, basic statistics models, and then uh, ML models, deep learning models as well. This is uh, what pretty much I do in my day-to-day -day work. Nice. And in terms of technology stack, you use Python, like do you want to talk about yeah. that? Yes, yes, yeah. Python and then uh, uh, as usual, ML libraries like Pandas, NumPy, Scikit-learn. Mm -hmm. And we also use like TensorFlow. And uh, nowadays we we are using Hugging Face libraries as well for doing NLP related work. Uh -huh. and, for NLP, and, Hugging Face is like first preference. I've seen it's quite popular yeah. in the NLP world. Nice. Uh, so I'm really glad that you're working in cutting edge technology. You're working as a data scientist. But if you talk about yeah. your background, your background was of a software engineer. So let's discuss that. Yeah. Like, what was your software engineering journey? Yeah. So it's been like uh, six plus years for me in this industry. So I have started my career as a uh, .NET developer. And I have worked in the same domain for around like, you know, good amount of time, like three to four years in the same domain. But uh, like, uh, somehow, like, I am not feeling, you know, like, satisfied with the value I am bringing up to the table. And also at the time, just data science, AI, ML uh, buzz is going on. And I thought mm. of giving it a try. Like I went back and then searched like what it is about. And then, you know, like what are the applications of data science? And I really got fascinated with the kind of applications this data science is solving out. So then I decided like, why not give it a try? Nice. I know after that Forbes uh, magazine article, uh, there was yeah. like so many podcasts, so many YouTube videos talking about data science and many yeah. people who are in traditional IT industry doing software development, like like yourself, who, who is a yeah. .NET software developer, they got interested in data science. Uh, but then how yeah. did you learn the skills? Because you had this nine to six job. And yeah. along with that, now you have to learn the skills. So talk about that uh, upskilling journey as well. So first thing I have done is like I have identified, like I used to work in one service-based company at the time. And I have identified the team which is working on this AML domain. And I used to like uh, uh, bug them up with all kinds of stupid questions I have. They used to sit in some different branch. So after my office work, I used to go there. I used to sit with them directly. I used to ask them like what kind of work you are doing and what are the technologies you are using in your day-to-day -day work. At the time, they were building some face recognition system for one of the clients. They were using computer vision and all. And everything was so German your, for me. So in your same company, there was a data science yeah. department. So you kind yes. of reached out to them and you would... Yeah. That's, that's a good idea because like that way... Yeah. Yeah, you, you will are get kind to know of... what exactly they do. Yeah. Okay. So that's the first thing I did. And uh, they shared me some resources as well. And we all know like there are plenty of resources for data science available on net. So uh, I went back and then I used to learn from the free resources. But somehow like I was learning in bits and pieces and I'm not able to connect the dots. And mm. I wanted to like expedite this process as well because I understood mm. like uh, I can do something in this area. After making the firm decision, I thought of uh, speeding up this process and I have joined post-graduation program as well in data science. Expecting a lot, but unfortunately it didn't turn up well. 
and it didn't meet my expectations so i used to advise people in my linkedin network as well uh, saying the same thing like you know like if you are not clear about what you will going to get after the course so please just give a thought before joining post graduation courses in data science because it, because it definitely costs you a lot i know there are many costly programs and once yeah. you enroll and start learning then you get disappointment and then yeah. you come to a point of realization that oh there are these free youtube videos or free resources which are much better than paid courses i mean i get a lot of comments yeah. on my channel as well yeah exactly so so step by step just to summarize uh, quickly uh, you reached out to a data science department in your company kind of got a feel of how real life data science projects look like you learn yeah. using online free resources and also enroll into this post graduation yeah. program uh, and finally like uh, you know i use some real time ai platforms as well like omdena who are giving out this uh, uh, opportunity for working on real time projects so i have enrolled for them as well and i participated in couple of challenges which helped me a lot with my preparation got it so how did you hear about omdena what was the application uh, process and what was your first project yeah so uh, somehow like i got uh, you know like enrolled into women in ml program i mean women in ml some email subscription was there even i'm not sure but somehow i got into that uh, uh, subscription mm. and i used to get like uh, mails every day about the uh, phd positions post doc positions and even people will share their resume asking for job opportunities and all one day like i was going through one of the resume and i identified like that person mentioning about projects like omdena Mm. and uh, i went back and then searched in their website and uh, those challenges like uh, were amazing and mm. those were like very generic problems everyone can relate to so mm. that how like it interested me a lot and coming to the mm. application process it's as simple as like in their website itself they will be running two to three projects every month in parallel uh, in different domains like nlp computer vision mm. and the normal ml based models and all depending on your interest you can apply for a particular project it's just like they will ask you a few questions like why you are interested in applying mm. for a particular project what are your basic skills and then you have to attach mm. your resume and yes uh, simple questions like that and then uh, they will get back to you in a week or so if you are shortlisted so if so, anyone uh, hearing this is interested in omdena project go to omdena.com and the application yeah. process is pretty straightforward their website is very intuitive so look at the projects if you want to apply you can just say apply and in the referral you can put code basics because our code basics and omdena has this mou and they will uh, pay attention to all the applications which are coming through code basics referral so when you apply make sure you mention code basics as your referral all right so now you applied on omdena website w- what was your first project tell us about your experience so was it like you were doing on your own or were you getting any mentorship did you have more people in the team what was that whole experience of first project yeah first of all like there is no prerequisite you know like you should have uh, these many skills for getting into omdena project the basic thing is like you should be interested in doing that project that's the mm. only prerequisite you have to have so my first project was uh, with reboot rx it is something like uh, ner task named entity recognition mm. task wherein we have to extract the entities from uh, medical reports to understand mm. like the impact of generic drugs on curing cancer treatment so that was a mm. problem statement so an nlp based task and i was completely not aware of anything related <laughs> to nlp only thing i knew was like it is related to some text that's it text data mm. Hmm. but i have applied and then i got shortlisted and then you know like people from different countries will be joining this uh, projects at the time hmm. like uh, we had like 52 collaborators joining from around 13 different countries so it will give you nice exposure in interacting with people from a uh, wide variety of backgrounds and you will have like uh, uh, people coming from different roles ranging from junior uh, data scientists to lead data scientists and you will even have applied data scientists so they will mentor you a lot and uh, once you are shortlisted the challenge will get started with a kick off program wherein the clients will directly uh, you know like uh, they will virtually meet with you and then they will explain about the problem statement and all so uh, once that is done everything is set up now it is the uh, work on completely on the collaborators side they have to uh, brainstorm they have to form the groups and they have to come up with the ideas they have to come up with their own task it is completely different from you know like what we usually do in our regular works in our regular works we will be getting tasks from you know some higher management and you will be working on it it's it's completely mm. different here you have to like think and you have to come up with tasks and uh, people here 
will collaborate and they will encourage you to finish up that task and project manager will just take care of you like if these tasks are aligned to the end goal or not so that's what the project manager do everything else will be done by the collaborators itself so it's a self organized team and there is like no yeah. pressure but at the same time everyone is motivated and then you build this project from bottom up right you come up with your own yeah. task and all that and exactly. i'm really glad uh, to hear that in your first project itself uh, it was like a real client you were talking with uh, experienced data scientists so they were mentoring you so it was yeah. like like an internship you agree right it's an internship literally yeah. and it's a kind of life project because and you follow the agile methodology as well every week you will mm-hmm. be sharing your report with the clients itself and they mm-hmm. will be sharing back the feedback you will take up those inputs and then you will start implementing them again it's it's some kind of like a modified agile version as well very good and did you use like jira or notion like what kind of tool did you use for project management and task allocation it's jira or trello yeah in some jira projects trello. we use trello yeah and also there is something like you know like you can nominate yourself to become a task leader as well so that you know you will be more accountable and you will be determined to do something because it is something like apart from your regular work right you mm. need that motivation as well so it will be highly encouraged if you go and nominate yourself as task leader so that uh, you will be more determined throughout the challenge to do something and what is the role of task leader do they do like short of like project management uh not not project management exactly but you know like they will arrange some meetings every week with that particular group say for example i have nominated myself uh, mm. as a task leader for annotation task so we will be discussing with the collaborators who have joined that particular group every week we will mm. be having our uh, uh, weekly meetings to share and then uh, discussing the feedback and we will prepare the presentation to share it with the clients task leaders are the one who will present it to the clients directly So you will get this that is, chance of yeah. This is amazing. You get a chance to practice your presentation skills, your communication skills, and all yeah. these soft skills are super important for data science career. People, yeah, I was exactly. just talking with some uh, data science aspirant, and I and I asked him simple question. In last one mm-hmm. week, how many hours did you spend learning technical skills? and how many hours did you learn uh, practicing your soft skills and you know what was the answer right it's it's pretty obvious soft skills is zero people zero, just yeah. focus on tool skills all the time okay python tensor flow they just focus on fancy tools they don't focus on client communication presentation team coordination these are super yeah. important skills and through omdena projects you are getting this real life opportunity to practice these yeah. skills yeah exactly all right now next question is how omdena help you in finding your first data science job okay so uh it's it's kind of an interesting question to me because you know like uh, when you put your resume at the time i had only uh, pocs like a kind of pocs using uh, ml based models and nothing in my uh, you know like regular company so along with that i kept this omdena projects as well so if you think in the interview perspective anyone like who is seeing uh, this kind of projects and that to these are like uh, open source right so you are contributing in your free time so that shows like you are serious about this domain and you want to do something so that would be the first impression you would get it definitely adds up to your uh, resume and one more thing is like these uh, real time challenges which you work in on then are so relatable that any interviewer will be motivated to ask like more questions around these things so mm. my, my interviews like 60 to 70% of the questions are from uh, omdena projects itself uh-huh. as i was like uh, actively collaborating i know in and out of the project so i am able to answer them with ease so that helped me a lot you're absolutely right yeah. i also interview a lot of people and if i see two resumes one resume has titanic dataset project one resume has omdena project which is a real life project obviously yeah. i'm going to select this resume for the interview so yeah, having exactly. omdena projects number 1 it helps you with the first hurdle which is i'm not getting an interview call many people get stuck yeah. there they don't get an interview yeah. call so omdena yeah. projects real life projects interviewer looks at it they're like oh this person has done real life work let me call that person for an interview and during the interview yeah. itself they're talking about real life projects and it gives such a solid impression on interviewer's mind that your probability of getting selected increases yeah exactly i want to give like one more example so i got an offer from uk based startup they are doing this precision witty culture based on computer vision at the time like omdena project was the only one which i have worked in uh, computer vision domain so my entire interview all the questions were from that project only and i got an <laughs> offer from uh, that company as well so yeah it helped me a lot 
it is definitely difficult thing you know like on uh, then i expect us to give like 10 to 15 hours of time every week it, it definitely you have to sacrifice your weekends kind of thing but it will hmm. pay off nice yes so you have to be yeah. committed and you don't expect a miracle that i will work only one hour every weekend and yeah. you know some some magic is going to happen so folks if you are applying for omdena ask this question to yourself are you serious are you committed if you are committed yeah. then only apply like don't waste their time because uh, omdena folks uh, they are doing kind of like charitable work they are like a social enterprise they collaborate with ngos and other entities and they help them run this project so there is there is some commercial aspect but it's not like a totally uh, commercial organization where they're looking for profit and all that so if you are serious then only apply and if you apply and if you work with the commitment like lithica did you will definitely see the outcome and the whole point you mentioned about that uk based companies interview is interesting yeah. see uh because it's like rather than interviewer driving the interview as per his agenda now yeah. it's like sh- you are short of driving you are driving the interview because throughout the interview you are talking about the project that you did so it's like yeah. you are kind of influencing the whole interview questions and that's always a benefit for a person who is giving the interview because then you're talking about the thing you you are familiar with right and if you have worked yeah, with exactly. this commitment most likely you will get selected okay yeah so moving on to the last question which is any advice for people starting work on omdena so we covered one point which is if you are applying for omdena project work with a commitment you need to spend 10 to what is the requirement weekly 10 to 15 hours 10 to 15 hours yeah okay do you have any other advice yeah one more advice is like if you don't know anything about that particular skill yeah. it's okay you just apply for it you're going to learn it like uh at the end you will learn something and then you will come out so that's the gut feeling i have like in any project you will learn out like many things you will learn by doing rather than you know like just studying about the theoretical concepts here you will uh, burn your hands and then you will learn by doing yeah amazing that's a and, beautiful advice yeah and one more big thing is like you will get amazing network with this uh, omdena community and uh, you know like people from different parts of the world like it's it's a great platform to build a network as well and you will get so many opportunities through them yeah perfect lithika would it be okay if i put your linkedin profile in our video description and if someone has yeah. a question they may reach out and you can respond i know you are busy so you can respond based on availability yeah definitely thank you very much akita for spending time for this conversation thank you so much davel yeah all right and now for people who are interested again uh, we are going to put a link of omdena website in a video description below we might add a few projects as well very self explanatory folks just go to their website apply look at their eligibility criteria in each of their project they specifically mention eligibility criteria most of the projects you will be eligible so read that carefully apply i wish you all the best and don't forget to mention core basics as a refer bye bye thank you 